Good evening, I'm Prasad Michael and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's biggest stories. With the Sabah state election not too far away, political parties are now in the process of strategizing. And for PKR, they've decided which logo they'll be using. There was a suggestion for political parties aligned to Warisan to contest using the Warisan logo in the upcoming Sabah state elections. However, that won't be the case for PKR. Party President Anwar Ibrahim told reporters in Port Dixon today. Ada cadangan, tetapi pihak keadilan memutuskan untuk menggunakan lambang keadilan. Previously, Amanah Youth had proposed for Warisan friendly parties to use the Warisan logo. The youth wing said this would demonstrate unity with the Warisan leadership in the election. For the record, Amanah DAP and PKR are component parties of Pakatan Harapan, which is an ally of Warisan. However, PKR Sabah had rejected Amanah's suggestion, calling it regressive and not strategic. PKR Sabah said the proposal was very inappropriate and it was akin to telling AMNO to use the Bersatu logo. Polling for the Sabah elections will be on September 26th, with nomination day falling on September 12th. Just when you thought you've heard it all, how about a ghost harassing someone at a MACC lockup to implicate a politician? There's no need to call the Ghostbusters. The Malaysian Graf Busters detention facilities are not haunted. Former MACC Chief Muhammad Shukri Abdul said this in response to former Felda Chairperson Muhammad Issa Samad's testimony at the Kuala Lumpur High Court on Monday. Shukri said he has never heard of such stories regarding the lockup in his over 30 years of service with the MACC and its predecessor, the Anti Corruption Agency. On Monday, Issa claimed that his former special political officer, Muhammad Zaid Muhammad Arib, had implicated him in corruption allegations, totaling 3 million ringgit to avoid being charged. After the latter was forced to do so under duress after being harassed by a ghost in the MACC lockup. Isa said, quote, I met Zaid when his uncle died in 2018. I greeted him and commented that he looked thin. He said while he was under Rayman, there were all sorts of things that happened. During the examination in chief by his counsel, Salahuddin Saidin, Isa added that Zaid was detained at the old MACC building and said that one of the cells was haunted. Isa said due to fear and being under duress, Zaid had set himself free by implicating him. Isa added that he had asked Zahid, who is now the 16th prosecution witness, to correct these statements which linked him to the charges. However, they never materialized. Meanwhile, Isa said Zahid had served as a special political officer from 2011 to 2016 and the appointment was made at the request of former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak. An opposition MP has alleged not only did a minister fail to undergo the 14-day quarantine period, he was attending events and meetings. After raising the matter in Parliament this week, supporter MP Theresa Kok continues to highlight Minister Mohamed Karudin Aman Razali's alleged non-compliance of the mandatory quarantine following a trip to Turkey. Today, the DAP MP claimed that the Minister had attended at least 12 programmes and meetings, exposing himself to thousands of people three days after he returned from Turkey on July 7th. Theresa Cox said in a statement that based on the Plantation Industries and Commodities Ministry's Facebook page, he attended a program in Duyong Marina Resort in Terengganu on July 10th. From July 10th to July 21st, Karudin was said to have attended a dozen programs and meetings. The locations of the events include Parliament, Jasin, the Prime Minister's Department, Kuala Naros, Sethiu, Pantai Penarak, Terengganu and Pulau Duyong. She said if he was infected with COVID-19 from the Turkey trip, it's possible that he could have spread the coronavirus to thousands of people and caused the Karudin Takiri cluster in Malaysia. Karudin, who is Kuala Naros MP, was accused of flouting the 14-day quarantine which those who enter the country have to abide by. Previously, he confirmed with the media that he had taken a COVID-19 test upon arrival at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport after his trip to Turkey and that he had attended the Day 1 rocket sitting on July 13th. For the record, during the span of Karudin's visit to Turkey from July 3rd to 7th, more than 5,600 new COVID-19 cases and 93 deaths were reported in Turkey. In total, Turkey has had more than 250,000 COVID-19 cases and more than 6,000 fatalities from the disease. For the first time in over a month, Malaysia has zero local cases. Here's the country's latest COVID-19 situation. Malaysia recorded zero locally transmitted COVID-19 cases today, the first time in over a month. July 14th was the last time Malaysia recorded zero local infections. However, Health Ministry Director General Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said today that there was a new but isolated cluster involving crew members aboard a ship in Bintulu, Sarawak.
Four of the five crew members tested positive during screening, while the test result for another crew member is still pending. Dr. Hisham said all these positive cases are imported cases that acquired their infections from abroad, involving two Malaysian citizens and two non-citizens. The ship that they work on has a travel history to Japan. The fifth imported case, meanwhile, is a non-citizen who arrived in Selangor from Bangladesh. Meanwhile, the number of cases recovered today exceeded new cases with seven people being discharged. This leaves Malaysia with 183 active COVID-19 cases. The death toll remains unchanged at 125. Several Sabah UMNO leaders aren't happy with the choice of Bung Mokta as their election director. Babur Satu is hoping they will be able to overcome their differences. Sabah Bursatu hoped that the state chapter of AMNO would solve his internal conflict in time to prepare for the state election. State Bursatu Chief Haji Ji Muhammad Noor was asked to comment on the disagreement voiced by AMNO Supreme Council member Abdul Rahman Dalan over the appointment of Sabah AMNO Chairperson Bung Mukhtar Radin as elections director for the upcoming state poll. He said he didn't want to comment as it was AMNO's internal matter but hoped they could resolve the problem to face the election. Earlier this week, Abdul Rahman had labelled the selection of Bung to lead the party election machinery as suicidal. Meletakkan seorang individu yang berdepan dengan masalah mahkamah, yang terpaksa turun naik mahkamah, dalam keadaan kita berkempen dan meyakinkan rakyat Sabah untuk mengundi AMNO adalah satu strategi yang bakal memakan diri kita. It's a suicidal move. No party in the whole world would put someone who has an active court case, attending court cases, becoming the leader of the party going into an election. You name me any, any, any country. Bung is facing three corruption charges over bribes totaling 2.8 million ringgit that were allegedly solicited during his tenure as Falkra chairperson. Coming up next, we spoke to former Minister Anthony Lok. We sat down with former Transport Minister and DAP Organising Secretary Anthony Lok this week for an interview where he proposed a ceasefire between Pakatan Harapan and the Perikatan National Federal Government. Yeah, well. First of all, why I propose such a ceasefire is that, uh, I mean, if you look at the past few months uh, yeah. since the Sheraton move and the fall of uh, Pakatan Harapan government, mm -hmm. and subsequently with uh, the MCO, mm -hmm. I think we have uh, gone through a period of uh, political instability. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, generally speaking, the people on the ground are quite uh, fed up. Uh, to look at the instability. So we just won one, 113 MPs on their side. So their position, of course, is quite weak. Okay. And there are a lot of pressure within Perikatan National, especially from Amno, for Muhyiddin to dissolve parliament. Okay. So my point of view is that uh, the Prime Minister has another option of not dissolving parliament. Of course, dissolving parliament is one way out to give back the mandate to the people and uh, to choose a new government. Mm -hmm. But we are facing an unprecedented situation right now with COVID-19, with economic challenges. Mm -hmm. And we think that the Prime Minister has another option of not dissolving parliament, mm -hmm. but to stabilize the current political situation. That is, in a way that there is some corroboration and cooperation mm -hmm. between the government and the opposition. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we are not suggesting that we go for unity government. What I was proposing is that there is some sort of corroboration mm -hmm. with a consensus or an agreement between the opposition and the government mm -hmm. that the current government can continue to rule for the time being. And they don't have to 
rush back every time there's a voting. Yes, there is a there probably that we can have an agreement that, okay, we we will we will not uh, uh, call for division, for example, but the fact is that Buhidin has been sworn in as prime minister. So whether we like it or not, he is the current prime minister of the country. But of course, there must be some con some condition that uh, uh, the opposition must uh, uh, be prepared to work on certain parameters. Such as? Such as, for example, there must be some consultation from the government on parliamentary agenda and uh, that the government MPs, uh, the opposition MPs can uh, play a more meaningful, meaningful role mm -hmm. of providing check and balance to the government through participation of select committee, for example. So providing a platform for opposition MPs to play a meaningful role of providing check and balance to the government. That is one. Okay. Secondly, of course, importantly, is that they must be access to government treatment in terms of uh, constituency or location. Well, I think in a way right now, we are in a stalemate. Okay. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. We are, the country is facing a political stalemate in that sense. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, uh, I think we are free to give our opinion. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I think if there is a, a, a consensus, I think everyone should come together okay. and to discuss and to consider about it. I'm not saying that everyone will agree immediately, mm -hmm. but at least discuss the terms and conditions and what are the parameters. Former U.S. President Barack Obama said the basic tenet of American democracy is at stake in the 2020 election. Former U.S. President Barack Obama on Wednesday assailed his successor Donald Trump as deeply unfit for the office he occupies and argued that voting for his former number two Joe Biden was necessary to ensure the survival of American democracy. But at this moment, this president and those who enable him have shown they don't believe in these things. Tonight, I'm asking you to believe in Joe and Kamala's ability to lead this country out of these dark times and build it back better. But here's the thing. No single American can fix this country alone. Not even a president. Obama said this of Trump during the third night of the Democratic National Convention. After avoiding direct criticism for most of Trump's first term, the skating broadsides from Obama constituted an unusually harsh appraisal of one president by another, although Trump has rarely hesitated to attack Obama, often leveling accusations of misconduct without evidence. Obama blamed Trump for the 170,000 Americans who have died from the coronavirus and the millions of jobs lost to an ensuing recession and the diminishing of the country's democratic principles at home and abroad. His assertion that Trump, a Republican, is incapable of meeting the demands of the presidency echoed the remarks from his wife, Michelle Obama, on Monday that Trump, quote, simply cannot be who we need him to be. On Twitter, Trump responded to Obama's appearance in all capital letters, suggesting Obama's decision to endorse Biden only after his Democratic rivals dropped out indicated doubts about Biden's candidacy. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll be back with more tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Prasad Michael. Thank you for watching.